How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. The following list is about 10 real events that inspired some of the best, most notorious episodes of The X-Files. Demonstrating the truth is indeed often stranger than fiction. And before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome, creepy content just like this. This disturbing episode depicts Scully and Mulder delving into the case of Dwayne Barry, a violent mental patient who believes that he's been repeatedly abducted by aliens. During her investigation, Scully discovers that Barry has brain damage as a result of a gunshot to the head, leading to him becoming a pathological liar with psychopathic tendencies. Some of the aspects of this episode are based on the case of Phineas Gage, a 25-year-old railroad worker in Cavendish, Vermont. Gage suffered a severe brain injury after a 13-pound metal bar used to tamp sand on top of an explosive charge caused a spark that shot the bar through his face and skull. Until his injury, Gage had been an even-tempered individual, but his personality changed drastically after the accident. He showed signs of aggression and fitfulness, and was suddenly prone to the use of disturbing profanity, all behaviours that hadn't been demonstrated in the past. It was believed that this change in his behaviours was due to the severe damage to his frontal lobe as a result of the injury. Gage's case was believed to be the first to definitively prove that brain injuries can produce marked personality changes. While most of the X-Files episodes centre on the paranormal or conspiratorial, Irresistible takes a different approach with the introduction of Donnie Faster, a budding serial killer who crosses paths with Scully and Mulder. After losing his job as an assistant funeral director for taking a lock of hair from a dead woman, Faster moves on to exhuming dead bodies to remove their hair and fingernail clippings to add to his collection of trophies. Faster eventually resorts to murder to satisfy his macabre desires. As the episode progresses, Faster seems to change in appearance, further frightening his victims. Donnie Faster was strongly based on the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, who committed his first murder in 1978 at the age of 18. He was finally captured in July 1991, confessing to have murdered 16 young men since 1978. According to his surviving victims, Dahmer's appearance seemed to change during the course of their captivity, adding to his twisted creep factor. In space, Scully and Mulder visit NASA to investigate the possibility of shuttle sabotage resulting in an aborted launch. Another launch is scheduled and initially it seems to be a success, but contact with the shuttle is soon lost and the shuttle crew find themselves in danger of incineration by the sun. It's soon revealed that Gemini astronaut Colonel Marcus Belt is keeping secrets. During a 1977 mission, he had a strange encounter with the face on Mars. Now he's being influenced by an astral presence that is apparently determined to see the destruction of the shuttle mission, along with the crew and the NASA program itself. In the end, Belt leaps from a window in an attempt to free himself of the possessing force. Chris Carter, the creator of the series, was inspired to write this episode after reading news articles about the face on Mars, as well as Paradolia, where the mind perceives a familiar image from random patterns. Carter also capitalised on the disappearance of the Mars Observer, which occurred around the same time this episode was in production, in August 1993. In this episode, a serial killer has the uncanny ability to project images of his darkest fantasies onto undeveloped film. Scully and Mulder are assigned to the case after photos developed at a pharmacy reveal a young woman screaming surrounded by a distorted background. While searching the killer's apartment, Mulder finds a camera that repeatedly produces the same image of the young woman seen earlier at the pharmacy, leading Mulder to the conclusion that the killer is somehow projecting his desires onto the film. Two different individuals were the basis for this episode of The X-Files. In the 1960s, Ted Sirios, a Chicago hotel worker, developed a talent for photography, a unique ability to project mental images onto film by concentrated thought. His ability rekindled interest in paranormal photography due to the fact that he used Polaroid film, whereas others who claimed to have the ability used film and procedures that were both complicated and easily manipulated. Mass murderer Howard Unruh was the other individual who was the inspiration for this episode. 
On September 6, 1949, 28-year-old Unruh went on a killing spree dubbed the Walk of Death, killing 13 individuals and injuring three others before being apprehended by the police. His reasons for the killings involved personal grudges that he held against his neighbours and local shop owners. Unruh is generally considered to be one of the first lone wolf mass murderers that have led up to the workplace and school shooters that we see on the news today. After a marine drives his car into a tree committing supposed suicide while working at a Haitian refugee camp, Scully and Mulder head to Haiti where they soon discover rumours that the detainees are being abused by the camp commander. As they dig deeper, suggestions of curses and voodoo surface, with hints that the government may be at the root of it all. Two articles about higher suicide rates amongst military personnel posted in Haiti inspired Howard Gordon to write this episode. A 1994 article stated that three soldiers had committed suicide over a three-week period, with morale, living conditions and native reception all being named as possible issues for higher suicide rates. It was determined that the suicide rate was 15 times the US national average, and the assignment seems to have had an unusually negative effect on the soldiers stationed there, in comparison to other locations that are potentially more hostile. When a high-speed car chase ends in Vicky Crump's head exploding and her husband being escorted to the hospital in handcuffs, Scully and Mulder travel to Nevada to investigate. Once there, Mulder finds himself taken hostage by Patrick Crump, a desperate man determined to head west at high speeds to alleviate the pain in his head and prevent it from exploding just as his wife's did. It's left to Scully to find a solution that will save her partner, and she soon discovers that Crump is the victim of a brainwave experiment that can lead to intense inner ear pressure and fatality if he fails to travel towards the Pacific coast. The inspiration for this episode comes from two different government programs. Project ELF, a US Navy experiment involving long waves, and Project HARP, a US Army experiment involving electromagnetic radiation in the ionosphere. While the government claims that both HARP and ELF are for research purposes with thoughts towards better communication, conspiracy theorists believe the real purpose of these projects are more sinister, with the creation of new and deadlier weapons being the real motive behind the expensive projects. After receiving a tip that a religious cult leader is caching weapons and abusing children, a raid is staged at the Temple of the Seven Stars resulting in the arrest of cult leader Vernon Ephesian, along with his wife Melissa and several other followers. Because they can only be held for so long without definitive proof, Ephesian and his followers are released, but another search of the compound for weapons is planned. Knowing that he won't be able to withstand further police interference, Ephesian instructs his men to open fire on the investigating agents, while he and the rest of the cult members drink poison to evade capture. Two different cults were the inspiration for this episode. The Branch Davidian Seven Day Adventists of Waco, Texas gained notoriety in 1993, when they and their leader, David Koresh, engaged in a two month standoff that ended in the death of Koresh and 82 of his followers. The Jonestown Massacre was also a source of inspiration for this episode. On November 18, 1978, Jim Jones ordered his followers to drink cyanide-laced Kool-Aid in a South American jungle community, after Congressman Leo Ryan visited the compound to evaluate the welfare of Jones's followers. Those who refused to drink the poison were later shot. 909 people died in total. Home gained a lot of notoriety due to the fact it was the first episode of The X-Files to receive a viewer discretion warning due to the content that included incest and abuse. The discovery of a severely deformed baby in Pennsylvania soon leads Scully and Mulder to the Peacock Brothers, who are found living in squalid conditions without even the basic amenities such as electricity and running water. Initially, it's thought that the brothers had kidnapped a woman to father a child. But eventually, Scully and Mulder find there's evidence of incest in the family that involves the mother of the Peacock Clan. Much of this episode was influenced by the story of the Ward Brothers, four illiterate brothers who lived on a farm near Syracuse, New York. The Ward Brothers lived in unbelievable squalor and were awkward in their behavior, demonstrating very little in the way of social skills. In 1990, Delbert Ward was accused of killing his brother William while he was sleeping. 
He was later acquitted due to a lack of evidence. Lucy Householder was kidnapped by a deranged man and held captive in darkness for five years before making her escape. Several years later, Scully and Mulder investigate the kidnapping of Amy Jacobs, a young teenager who was kidnapped from her bed much as Lucy had been. During the course of the investigation, it comes to Mulder's attention that while at work, Lucy collapsed and suffered from a nosebleed at the same time that Amy was kidnapped. While Scully thinks that Lucy may have been involved in the kidnapping, especially after it's determined that her nosebleed consisted of an additional blood type that matches Amy's. Mulder is convinced of the woman's innocence and believes that she can help them to find the missing girl. Lucy begins to display spontaneous injuries that coincide with the injuries that Amy is receiving from her kidnapper. It's determined that a psychic link between the two has developed. Ultimately, Lucy gives her life in order to save Amy, an act facilitated by the psychic bond that they shared. This episode was heavily influenced by the kidnapping of 12-year-old Polly Class, whose kidnapping and murder were a primary news topic when the episode aired. On October 1st, 1993, Richard Allen Davies entered Polly's bedroom where she was having a slumber party and carried her away at knife point after tying up her two friends and placing pillowcases over their heads. Later that evening, a call was made to 911 that a vehicle was stuck in a ditch about 20 miles north of Petaluma, California, where Polly was kidnapped. Deputies investigated the call not knowing about the kidnapping. Davis was the driver of the vehicle. After searching the car and running his license, a tow truck was called and Davis was free to go. On November 28, 1993, the owner of the property where Davis had been stuck found scraps of clothing that matched items that Polly was wearing at the time of the kidnapping, which eventually led to the arrest of Davis. On 4th, he confessed to kidnapping and strangling Polly and led police investigators to the shallow grave where he buried her. It's believed that Davis killed Polly and hid her body in the woods near the ditch where his truck was stuck. He later returned to retrieve the body after the deputies had left. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at a truly bizarre case involving poisonous blood, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be up to date with all the latest content on our channel. Scully and Mulder investigate the case of Dr. William Sakare, a man who appears to have bled green blood after being shot by the police before disappearing without any other trace. Later, when Sakare is picked up by an ambulance, a poisonous gas is released from his body when paramedics attempt to insert a needle into his chest. It's later determined that Sakare is actually a human-alien hybrid whose blood is toxic to humans. The scene involving the release of poisonous gas from Dr. Sakare was directly inspired by the case of Gloria Ramirez. In February 1994, 31-year-old Ramirez was rushed to a California hospital due to the effects of late-stage cervical cancer. It was noted that her skin had an odd oily sheen, and when her blood was drawn, small particles were seen floating in it. Ramirez also had a fruity, garlicky odour coming from her mouth and her blood gave off a strong smell of ammonia. Soon after drawing her blood, one nurse fainted while another developed breathing issues. Another nurse also fainted and later awoke without the ability to move her arms or legs. Six individuals had health issues attributed to working on Ramirez, some requiring hospitalization. Ramirez died a short time later due to her cancer. It was eventually speculated that Ramirez had been using dimethyl sulfoxide as a treatment for her cancer. Defibrillation that she received could have converted it to dimethyl sulfate, which would have been toxic to those exposed to it. While this theory is the most popular one, it's never been definitively proven. Well, that's it for another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Now, in the comments section below, let us know if you're an X-Files fan from way back in the day and which was your favorite episode. If you're new to our channel and enjoying what you see, slap that upward facing thumb. It really helps us out. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time.